Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this Serpensky triangle and Serpensky carpet inside Microsoft PowerPoint. And I have to say that this video is heavily inspired by a different YouTube video from Stand Up Maths when they actually create those fractals inside PowerPoint as well. You should definitely check out this video. I will put the link in the description. But today I will show you a little bit different method, which of course also have these uh, pros and cons. So I will start with the Serpensky carpet. The way how you Put together a carpet is you just take a square you divide this into nine different squares and you just leave out the middle one or just maybe make it in a different color and then you repeat this for each square and over and over again which is of course the nature of fractals so i will jump into blank presentation maybe this one i will get rid of everything and of course we need a square so i will jump to design and set the slide size to be maybe i don't know nine by nine just because it's easily divisible by three I will click OK and what I want to draw is a small rectangle in the middle. So I will select insert, I will select shapes and a rectangle. I will wait until it's load and somewhere in the middle. Now I will right click, select the format shape and of course type in the exact values for the size. It should be 3 by 3 inches and of course the position should be 3 inches from left and 3 inches from top. So it's right in the middle. I will change the outline to no outline and maybe fill will be this violet one. Now the next step is very important. What we will do is we will take this left preview and drag it over the slide. So we will create what's called a zoom view of the slide, but we will actually create it over the current or very same slide. This causes PowerPoint to just redraw itself over and over and again. So as you immediately look and see that we are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and so on rectangle. So I will make it in the right size like so in the same size as the middle one and I will just copy everything with the control and shift key pressed and I will just drag it to the right side so it creates a copy like this and one more time. And you can immediately see that we are getting some kind of fractal. So I will just continue duplicating this zoom view over and over again until I will have eight different copies. And at some point you will see that we get this very fractal which we are looking for. Now the first problem is there is some kind of outline. So I will select all, the, all those zoom views, jump to format and set the zoom border to have no outline. And the second problem is, you know, everything kind of vanishes. You know, at some point you don't see anything. Maybe, you know, just a little bit, but it's very faint. Everything is kind of in the same color. That's the problem of PowerPoint just so we cannot control the number of iterations. It tries to redraw itself over and over again until those squares are so small they are actually smaller than the you know than the pixel on your computer screen. So those are there. It's a perfectly nice fractal, but the problem is it's not visible. You know, everything is sub-pixel. So how do we force PowerPoint to stop at some point? And that's the main advantage of you disadvantage of using this method. So what I will do is I will select maybe actually First, I will create a new slide. Then I will select this middle rectangle and change the fill to maybe white. Now at some point, I will jump to the next slide, hoping that it will stop redrawing. And when I jump back to the first slide, it will not actually start redrawing, which is exactly what happened. So in the process of redrawing, I've jumped to the next slide, which somehow tells PowerPoint to stop redrawing the first slide. And then when I jump back, you know, it, it doesn't continue, which is which is great. Maybe I can try to do this one more time, but try to run it for a longer time. Maybe I'll change the line to some line for a while and then, you know, quickly jump to next slide. Nice. So if I have a nice looking fractal without disappearing, and you can see if I zoom in, you can still see those very small dots which are drawn, you know, in the sub smaller than the pixel. So now when we know how to draw this Serpensky carpet, uh, drawing this triangle will be e easier as well. So I will jump into blank presentation and for the triangle I need to know the slide size just so I can have the triangle with all the sides being the same. I already have this know the size so it should be it should be 12 by 10 and 10.4. So this should be the right size. I will zoom out a little bit and I will draw insert a new triangle. So insert shapes and I will draw what's called the isosceles triangle, which is this one. I will draw it almost, you know, full screen, but I will right click and select format shape. And of course, type in those values just to be sure. So the height is 10.4. That's right. The width is 12, which is great. And the position is zero and zero, just to make sure that everything is positioned properly. I will change the outline to no outline and fill. I don't know, maybe I can use the same violet as well. 
then again I will drag this preview on the, from the left side over the slide like so and I will make sure that the size is set to 50% so 50% it is move it to top and centered and copy it one more time for left and bottom and right and bottom and immediately you can see that we are getting the Serpensky triangle I will select all three copies and again I will set the border to be no outline and you will see everything starts disappearing so again I have to select the triangle which is not visible right now so I will select home select selection pane before doing anything I will add a new slide so I will select add a new slide and for the first one for the triangle I will maybe change the fill to some different color maybe blue one and at some point you know I will hide everything for a while then I will show everything again and at some point I want to jump to next slide maybe now maybe I was you know it was too early you can see that not everything is being redrawn properly so how to force this to redraw again I will select one of those slide zooms and maybe I will change something maybe I will change the line to solid line and then jump back to no line and this will force everything to redraw now I was probably too late you know it kind of redraws to a stage where I cannot see anything almost so again I have to do this one more time hide everything show everything and jump to the next slide until I feel like I have enough iterations now it stopped in here so I will select slide zoom change the whatever fill or maybe change the solid line and jump to next slide and you can see this kind of tricky I was late as well so I will try to do this one last time hide everything show everything it will draw only to some iteration like this one so I will select one of those slide zooms change the outline and quickly jump to the next slide and hopefully this time I was a little bit quicker and I wasn't okay so yeah that's the main disadvantage of using the slide zooms you can either have very few iterations like like this you only have like four iterations or if you have more iterations you will you will actually jump you know end up with your fractal being being faded to a point where everything is one color but other than that I think this is a pretty cool solution how to create fractals inside Microsoft PowerPoint so that's it thank you for watching and see you next time